My name is Slava Magutin and I'm a uh, Russian-born artist and writer uh, based in New York. I was exiled from Russia when I was 21 um, from one of the main reasons for uh, my persecution was my political journalism and activism because uh, I was the first openly gay uh, writer and personality in the Russian media. And um, um, I left Russia when, uh, in 1995 when I was 21 years old, but I started publishing my journalism and um, uh, my writings when I was a teenager, in, uh, when I was 16 or 17. And um, um, homosexuality was considered a crime in Russia up until 90, uh, 1993. And uh, in, in 94, I was trying to um, register officially the first same-sex marriage in Russia. And that was one of the main reasons for my persecution, uh, which ultimately led to my exile from Russia. It was definitely very uh, difficult and challenging experience to be writing uh, on gay issues uh, at the time when homosexuality was an absolute taboo in the Russian media and Russian press. And uh, uh, up to this date, it's still a very homophobic country, unfortunately, because there are very few um, gay places, very few uh, openly gay people and uh, um, Mayor Lushkov of Moscow is, is a uh, notorious homophobic politician who's been repeatedly denying uh, um, gay parades in, in Moscow for the past um, 20 years. There were different attempts to organize a gay pride march and parade in, in Moscow and he called um, uh, homosexuality, the satanic, um, uh, satanic thing and something that he strongly against. And, um, so it was definitely very challenging to, to be working in that homophobic environment and homophobic country at the time when, you know, still the majority of the population was, uh, you know, very much um, brainwashed and the official propaganda was still very strong at the time when I started publishing my journalism and um, <coughs> I was interested in overthrowing these taboos and stereotypes so um, uh, I was writing on a lot of subjects that were prohibited in the mass media and well homosexuality was one of them um, and one of my um, one of my articles was called "Homosexuality in the Soviet uh, Camps and Prisons in the Gulag." So I interviewed a lot of people who were actually prosecuted for being gay back in the Soviet Soviet time, and uh, it was a very uh, interesting and also very disturbing account of persecution against gays in the Soviet Union, and. Um, <coughs> Even though the uh, the anti-gay law was abolished by by the Yeltsin government, uh, still the majority of the population remains very homophobic. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, the the whole environment is very negative. And even though I went back to Russia after my exile and I published books and I won an important literary prize there and I had shows of my work still. It's very difficult to have a, the kind of positive reaction from the general audience because still it's considered something very margin, marginal and something very, you know, kind of outlaw attitude about this, this uh, subject, you know. And um, when I came to New York, it was also very difficult for me to um, find the new language and uh, find ways of express, expressing myself 
uh, uh, because I was primarily working as a writer and was still writing in, in Russian. So it was difficult for me to adapt to this new country and, and start working. You know, it's, it was a period when I, uh, first of all, I uh, had to pretty much reinvent myself as, a, as an artist and as a person because, uh, you know, I had to learn the new language and I had to find a way how to start my whole life and career from the ground zero, essentially. So, um, I, I was always taking pictures and um, um, working on, in different mediums besides, besides writing and text. So, I started focusing more on my visual art and um, um, when I first came to New York, I was modeling for a lot of uh, great artists and photographers like Terry Richardson and Jack Pearson and David Armstrong and um, Arthur Trass. And um, I learned a lot from working with each and every of them. So it was interesting school for me, an interesting experience, and it also gave me confidence to continue with my own personal work. and. Uh, about 10 years ago I started publishing and exhibiting my photography and um, I published two books um, of, of my photography with um, the very good American publisher called Powerhouse Books and uh, one of them is called Lost Boys, it's a book about, in fact I can show you, they have, they have them in the office here, it's a book of photographs, mostly urban portraiture from Russia and um, Europe and um, it's pretty much a survey, documentation of different urban subcultures and um, um, an exploration into different obsessions and uh, fetishes of the so-called youth culture. Um, I, I, I wanted to document different archetypes of uh, um, urban subcultures such as skinheads and military cadets and uh, skaters and punks and um, football hooligans. So it's, in a way it's kind of like an encyclopedia of different um, obsessions and um, different um, worlds that, you know, kind of like a universal youth subculture that unites a lot of kids around the world. And um, my last book is called uh, NYC Gogo, and it's, it's a documentation of New York underground uh, gay scene and kind of sex sex on the ground and um, it's very great kind of straightforward documentary essentially you know it's something that I, I wanted to make a book that is about my second home which is New York and uh, mm -hmm. 